وأنت يا كفر ناحوم أترتفعين إلى السماء إنك ستنحطين إلى أسفل الجحيم الذي يسمع منكم يسمع مني والذي يرزلكم يرزلني والذي يرزلني يرسل الذي أرسلني فرجع السبعون بفرح قائلين يا رب حتى الشياطين تخضع لنا باسمك فقال لهم رأيت الشيطان ساقطا من السماء مثل البرق ها أنا أعطيكم السلطان لتدوسوا الحياة والعقارب وكل قوة العدو ولا يضركم شيء ولكن لا تفرحوا بهذا أن الأرواح تخضع لكم بل افرحوا بالحري أن أسماءكم مكتوبة في السماوات Use every opportunity to pray and 
to submit yourself and to humble yourself in front of God and for the work of the Holy, the Holy Spirit to be work in you. Again, it's like we're filling a bottle of water. If you want to be the, the bottle to be full of water, you're going to keep it for a good time to be full of water. But if you just uh, put it under the water and pull it out quickly, you're going to have like a little bit of water. So, as we commemorate our Father the Apostles at the Martyrdom of St. Peter and St. Paul, we also see the work of the Holy Spirit in them. That's why the Lord asked them, don't leave Jerusalem until you receive the promise of the Father, the gift of the Spirit. So you will be able to preach and for the whole nation. So through the, through the, the work of the Holy Spirit in them, they did a mission impossible. They did an awesome job with no resources, for any up and a lot of the challenges, they preached the whole nation and their voices went forth into all earth. And you know that in less than 60 years, 60, zero, 60 years, they went to the whole nation, Gentiles and Jews, and preached what the gospel. Jerusalem, Syria, Asia Minor, Rome, Egypt, North Africa, even till India, all this country and all these regions were preached, known the name of the Lord in less than 60 years. A supreme achievement. And the reason behind it was they were filled with the Holy Spirit. And they, they really, the work of the Holy Spirit also presented in their love. As St. Paul said, in labors more abundant, and stripes above measure, and presence more frequently, and death often. From the Jew five times I received forty stripes minus one. Thirty three times I was beaten with roads. Once I was stoned. Three times I was shipwrecked and a night and a day I have been in the deep. In journeys often in peril of water, in perils of rubbers, in perils of my own countrymen, in perils of the Gentile and in the city in the wilderness, in the sea, among false brethren, in worries and toil, in sleep, lessness often, in hunger and thirst, in fasting often, in cold and nakedness, beside it, the other things. This was their life. A life of suffering. A life of I don't know. It was a very hard life. How they would be able to handle it through the Spirit. Through the Spirit. And they were really the foundation of our faith. As St. Paul said, having been built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. And the book of Revelation, they said, Now the wall of the city had twelve foundations, and on them were the names of the twelve apostles of the Lamb. Great achievement. A thorough of faith. They went all over the nations, and they accept suffering, hunger, thirst, being beaten, being thirst because of their great love for Christ our Lord. 
and we have been blessed to have St. Mark the Apostle as a founder of our church. That's why we call our church an apostolic church because it was founded by one of the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ. All the things were through the work of the Holy Spirit. And as we pray in the prayer, the fraction prayer during the fast of our, of our apostles, and He, the Holy Spirit, filled them with all knowledge, all understanding, and all spiritual wisdom according to your faithful promise. Do you know, do you want to be like our father, the apostles? Do you want to have better understanding? Do you want to have old knowledge? Do you want to have spiritual wisdom? You have to be filled through the Spirit. And to be filled by the Spirit, you have to stay longer in prayers with submission, with humbleness, with respect, with honor, engage in prayer, focusing not disturbed so because you can come to the church but you're not focused in prayer you come to the church but you're not focused to get blessings and to receive blessings you just come to maybe comfort your conscience or I have to do so why I don't know they told me from when I were young that you have to go to church every Sunday and take communion what's the reason I don't know it's a must why it's a must I don't know here we go. It's a must because we come to the church to be filled with the Spirit, to have better understanding, to have all knowledge, to have spiritual wisdom. Last week we are talking about being strong and great and successful. Today we are talking about being understanding, have knowledge and spiritual wisdom. So you can be you can achieve a supreme achievement like our Father, the Apostles. The Holy Spirit were teaching them, guiding them, and reminding them. And I want to uh, hold on reminding them. Do you know how long that the Apostles spent with the Lord, Jesus Christ? How long the Lord were teaching them as His disciples? More than three years, maybe three and a half. Okay, if I ask you about last year's sermon, how many of you would be able to tell me what I have said last, last week? Very few. Okay? Last week or last year? Last week. So, how they kept three years for three and a half years of teaching in their mind to teach us about it or to re-deliver it to us how, how they did so without having any audio recorders or iPod or iPad or any kind of technology how they remind all this speech that the Lord tell them about it the Holy Spirit. through the Holy Spirit he remind them with everything. No book notes, no notes, nothing. This is the work of the Holy Spirit. And they give them a mouth of wisdom and wisdom which no one can contradict or resist. This is the work of the Holy Spirit. That we will not be able to receive it unless we stay longer in prayer. And as we said last time, that the personal prayer and the liturgical prayer. The personal prayer, this would be every time. In the morning, during the day, before I sleep, before I do anything, before I go anywhere. And liturgical prayers, whenever we gather in the church and pray, whisper, matin, liturgy, praises, whatever. And one of the best times to receive the gift of the Spirit is during the liturgy. One of the best times to, to have a understa better understanding for the scripture is during the liturgy. One of the best times to be engaged with the heavenly host during the liturgy. So we are not here just to spend time. We're here to be
fulfilled with the Holy Spirit and the work of the Holy Spirit. We're here to have a better understanding. We're here to have a, a blessing, spiritual wisdom. We're here to have a guidance. We're here to have a peace, a joy, and love. We're here to, to be united with our Lord Jesus Christ through the work of the Holy Spirit. They were filled with the Holy Spirit. Give them wisdom and mouth that no one can contradict or resist. And as it was mentioned in the book of Acts, that they were led by the Spirit. Through fasting and prayer, if you read the book of, of fast, before doing anything, they used to fast and pray, and then listen to the voice of the Spirit in them all as a group of believers. In the New Testament, we know the Word of God through the church, not the individuals. Very important. No one can say, I know better than anyone because the Lord has appeared to me and I have a dream of so and so and the Spirit told, told me if you have such a vision or a dream, you have to go to the church and explain it to them. And the church has to fast and pray and to agree and disagree with you. Who did so in the book of Acts? Hmm. St. Paul saw okay? the Lord appeared to him. And he spent three and a half years with the Lord in the desert. And after he learned from the Lord himself, he went to Jerusalem and he went with the church, Peter, James, and John. And he reviewed with them his gospel. This is how St. Paul said. He said, because I want to make sure that what I'm saying, I'm teaching is right and it's not in vain. This is how it works in the church. We have a foundation. We have a holy synod to refer to. No one can come by himself and say, I'm a prophet, follow me. No more. Since the Lord established the church, he gives the authority to the church to teach, to guide, and to judge. How? Through the work of the Spirit in the church. So if I want to know the will of God, I'm not waiting for a dream or a vision. I'm asking the church to fast and pray with me. And whatever the Lord revealed for all of us, this will be the will of God. For all of us, we all have to be agreed on as one body, having the same Spirit. The Spirit of the Lord is one Spirit. So he can be, he can contradict himself. The Spirit can come and tell me something and tell you the opposite things. Doesn't work like that. Because we have the same Spirit. That's why, again, to know that this is the will of God it has to be confirmed by the church, not by individual. This is how they work. And this is how they live with the Spirit. In the book of Acts, chapter 4. And when they had prayed, when they had prayed, the place where they were assembled together was shaken. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. And they spoke the word of God with boldness. This is why we come to the church. For all of us to be filled with the Spirit and to, to preach and tell everybody the Word of God. This is our mission as a disciple of the Lord's disciples is to follow their footsteps being filled with the Spirit through fasting and prayer and doing our job as a missionary as ambassadors for God, telling everyone about God and about His salvation. 
Well, one of the unique things that the apostles had, they were the eyewitness of the Lord. And also, they had strong faith. They knew by no doubt that they have, there is no salvation without Christ. There is no other way but Christ. Christ is the only way to heaven. And they feel the responsibility toward every man to deliver this good news and message for them. And they, they use every opportunity in synagogue, houses, school, market, in front of ruler and kings, in prison, at the riverside, on the road, to tell everybody about Christ and about salvation. And today's message is to honor our Father, the Apostles, who bear all this suffering because of their great love towards our Christ the King. And also to imitate them. Imitate them with a strong relationship of the Holy Spirit, being filled with the Holy Spirit. Imitate them to be an eyewitness of Christ, have a strong relationship with Christ. Imitate them having a strong faith and believe in Christ and imitate them by preaching the gospel and the good news to everybody with sincere love, accepting of suffering for the name of Christ. May God grant us the knowledge and the wisdom and the faith and the love of our Father the Apostles that we may imitate them in their struggle and in their faith and in their love and being filled with the Spirit. And we return back to the Spirit of the early Church that when we pray, we pray with one heart, with one voice, with one thought. All of us are focusing on prayer, praying from the bottom of our hearts, asking the Holy Spirit to descend on us and fill us with all wisdom and all 